Part 1. Unlimited Trouble in the System. First topic is interdependency and why it is going to be a factor. Take the game of golf. You only need one player. It's nice to go out on a twosome or a foursome, but to play, you only need yourself. But what about other sports, like, say, baseball? You need a whole team for baseball. And if several players are out sick, well, it's too bad. You're not going to be able to play. Being independent is far better than being interdependent. Baseball is a game where you're interdependent on the other players in the team. It's much better to be independent like you are in golf. That way you can go out and play anytime you feel like it. Let's go back in time to the good old days, before the automobile, when small farms dotted the countryside. The small farms were not dependent on anyone. They were far more self-sufficient than anyone today could ever imagine. There were very few items that they needed. They needed sugar. They needed matches. They needed salt and a few other small items that they could all get at the small farm country store. And you remember the old country stores? The old fellows used to sit around a pot-bellied stove, and they used to kick their feet up and play checkers. And you'd go in there, and there would be all kinds of items on sale. It was things that they'd need at the farm, and clothing, and whatever they needed at the small farms. They would also buy items from the Sears Roebuck catalog. And when they were done with the catalog, they would take it out to the, the to their uh, uh, outhouse. And uh, most of them didn't have uh, indoor plumbing, and they would go out to their outhouse, and they would tear the pages out of the Sears catalog, and they'd crumple them up and uncrumple them. And after they crumpled them and uncrumpled them about 15 or 20 times, the page would get real soft, and they could use it for toilet paper. So the Sears catalog, if they didn't use it for that, uh, in the end they used it for kindling to get their fires going when, when the catalog got outdated. And then the new catalog would come along, and they would look through and they'd find things that they wanted. They could even buy dynamite in there for blowing stumps out of the ground. They could uh, buy all kinds of implements for moving uh, equipment around and all kinds of things. These items were made from cast iron. These farm implements, they would uh, run the power often from a horse, or oftentimes they would run off of human arm power. These implements would last nearly forever because they were made out of cast iron, providing that you'd put a little bit of grease on the gears every now and again. Some of the implements would plow the soil. Some would bale the hay. Some would lift the hay up into the loft of the barn. They would cut the wheat crop, etc., etc. As the commercial banks slowly foreclosed on all of the small farms, what happened to all those cast iron farm implements? Because those implements made the farms of North America very independent. They were very independent. They didn't need diesel. They didn't need electricity, and they didn't need the Internet for their control of food production. The small farms were not, were not interdependent. They were independent. Their ability for food production was not nearly as great as modern agriculture. But if, say, there was a power outage, or perhaps the Internet was down, or a fuel shortage, or perhaps a monetary crisis, then those farms would still be able to produce food. Can you imagine the modern milking machines if the power isn't up and running?